Hello, my name is Tom Stapleton, and today we have another program called the Red Sox Review. This will be a wrap-up, and there's an awful lot to talk about, so we'll try to squeeze everything in in the next three hours. Um, only kidding. <laughs> Anyways, with us we have uh, two wonderful people who have a lot of knowledge about baseball. And Richard Reedy over to my right. He uh, left his teaching position at Harvard to do this show, so we're really, really happy to have him here. Thank you. Great to see you, Tom. And to his left, we have Frank Fiorentino. And in my opinion, he's God of baseball. You just can't stump this guy. You know, He's been around for quite a while, so he's, he has a lot to say about today, too, so pay attention. Now, myself, uh, I have a new segment that I'm going to throw in there once in a while, once Frank gives me the cue. It's called Things That Won't Be Forgotten. And you'll hear about these as the program goes along. I think you'll like it. So Frank, why don't you start the show and we're ready to go. Thank you, Tom, and hello, everybody. Uh, we're now speaking uh, in October the 8th. In 2020. The 2020. Yeah, make sure. <laughs> right, 2020. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we are going to discuss what our f Red Sox failed to do this year, as we all know, which was a horrible year, even though it was only a 60-day, 60 60-game 60 schedule. Uh, but uh, they did not show any promise at all this year. And uh, I want to just go through what we think is the problems with the Red Sox this year. The number one problem is pitching. We know the Red Sox had very little, if any, pitching. And a part of that was that the Red Sox, and we're going to get into this a little later, the Red Sox were way over what is called the salary cap which was around $200 million for total salary for everybody. They were in the 240 range, the 250 range, the 230 range for the last few years. So the salary cap played a major impact on the Red Sox this year and the, and the status that they had in pitching and in general all of their players. So Dick, before we go into pitching, I thought you might want to talk a little bit about the administration of the Red Sox as to why they did what they did and why they were in this position this year. Thank you, Frank. Uh, well, the, the prime reason was the fact that they were trying to buy a World Series. They, were try they always compete with the Yankees every year for, for publicity, etc. But the Red Sox don't manage their finances as well, nor do they have the cash flow that the Yankees have. And as a result, they have to go and get uh, players outside their, their organization, and they don't come to the Sox cheap. And in order to maintain their competitive edge and their interest in the, in the New England baseball uh, fans, they go out and buy these people who they think are going to carry them to success in the, in the playoffs and hopefully the World Series. And they just didn't do that for the past three years. You're right, Tom. And this is what happened this year. The Red Sox let go Price who had two years left at $48 million. They let Mookie Betts go, as we all know. Uh, they couldn't sign him. But in looking at Mookie Betts' contract with the Dodgers, even though it was an astronomical amount of $370 million, plus or minus, the Red Sox could have handled that because the Dodgers are paying Mookie Betts over a 25-year period. So the Red Sox could have handled that over that 25-year period. And I don't believe the Red Sox ownership is going to be here for 25 more years. So they didn't have to really get rid of Mookie Betts. They could have run out the same type of contract to him as the Dodgers did. So Price is gone. Mookie Betts is gone. Porcello was on for $20 million. He's gone. Uh, and you look at the Chris Sale, who just signed a five-year, $150 million contract last year. And you know what happened to him? He had surgery of Tommy John surgery on his arm, and I don't think, Dick, we're going to see anything from Sale until at least the middle of next year. That's correct. If they play a full year, and God knows what's going to happen when he starts pitching, whether he can manage to get back to his own self or not. I don't know, Tom. That's a big question mark, and they put out all this money for this uh, future uh, win prospect. And so we got him for five years for $30 million. So this is what's nailed on the Red Sox 
right now with all of this money that they had spent in the past and they still have a contract. They also have an, uh, a Valdi, and he came and became a $68 million pitcher after pitching six innings in an 18 inning World Series game. That's what got him the $68 million. He did do very well in that $68 million year, but they have him for two more years at $17 million a year. And he hasn't been able to pitch a complete game this year, and he hasn't been able to do it at all. And he gets hurt quite a bit. Uh, we also see Rodriguez, who did not pitch at all this year because he did have the coronavirus, and then he had a heart problem as a result, so he sat out the whole year. So the Red Sox really had no starting pitching this year, and that is what contributed to their downfall. They had the second highest earn run average in Major League Baseball this year, which was over 5.6 runs per game, which is a lot of runs to give up per game. And also, I believe that the bullpen was not what it should have been. And if you want to talk a little bit about the bullpen, Dick. Yeah, there was no bullpen. That's right, there was no <laughs> bullpen. Uh, yeah. You know, Go ahead, Dick. That was too bad because, you know, most fans remember some of the top flight uh, reliefers we used to have. But this year, no one knows the names of any of those guys because they, they didn't perform. The Red Sox had, Dick, 24 pitchers in some sort of a game all during the 60-game schedule. They had 24 pitchers throw in, the, in these games. 17, 16 of them were starting pitchers. So they had 16 starting pitchers and 24 overall, most of whom we don't even remember their name because they were in the minor leagues and even in A ball, not in triple A ball, but in A ball. So they, they used their minor league pitchers to see what, in fact, these guys could do, and they did not perform at all. There was one rookie that came up later in this season, and his name is Tanner Houck. And he pitched very well for the Red Sox for the three games that he pitched in. But that's only a little smattering of what we think he can do, but let's hope that we can do it next year. But he's very young, and uh, it may not be another year or two before he comes to fruition. Uh, the Red Sox had a guy named Paveda who came from the Phillies. He had a five-and-a-half ERA, which is not good. The Phillies let him go. And so we're looking at what are they going to do next year for pitching, Dick? I, I looked at the free agent market, and the best pitcher out there on the free agent market is this guy named Trevor Bauer. And he pitched for Cleveland at one time, and then he went to the National League, to Cincinnati. And I don't see any other pitcher out there that has any possibilities of being a free agent. Now, Tanaka for the Yankees is a free agent this coming year which may be somebody the Red Sox might be interested in. This Marcus Stroman, who pitched for Toronto at one time, is out there in the free agent market. But they are mediocre pitchers. They're number three, number four starters, Dick. They're not yeah. a number one or a number two. That's true. And, uh, you know, but you get concerned because if the Sox go after those, those players that you just mentioned, it'll be somewhat similar to what they've done in the past. They go after a name and think that this person's going to bail them out when, in fact, they don't perform, they give them a lot of cash, and they're back in the same uh, situation as they are today. You are correct, and that's what I feel is going to happen this year. I don't see them strengthening this pitching to the extent that they need to to be competitive. I don't know if they're going to be, I don't think they're going to be competitive in the coming year. And we don't even know what the coming year is going to look like based on the coronavirus situation as it stands right now. We may be in the same situation come the spring as we are right now in terms of fans attending the game. So, Dick, I want you to, and I listen to our friend Tom here, <laughs> who has something to say about the fans, I think. Well, that's part of it. Thank you, Frank. And um, you're right. Um, um, listening to what both of you just said, it doesn't sound too good right now, but uh, maybe this will pick you up a little bit when you hear what I have to say. And good. then I'll go back to that. Now, the one thing I want to do, I do want to mention this year is that, um, that the fans this year were very considerate. I mean, I've never seen a bunch of people that uh, really deserve a praise because 
you know, you didn't see anybody spilling beer on somebody. Um, you didn't have some annoying person yelling and screaming in your ear all the time. But you know, the thing is, when you look at the fans, uh, they just look a little stiff. So, uh, you know, I, I was wondering about that. But the one thing that was really good is when it came time to cheer, the fans were right on cue. They, they just did a great job when he hit a home run or something like that. Now, you know what that's really called? That's called a good audio engineer. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> True. <laughs> this was audio. It was good for what they used it for. Um, and speaking of the bullpen, uh, I want to just mention a couple of people that we do know. Uh, one was Barnes, who's been around for quite a while, and the other was Brazier, who's been around for the last two or three years. Barnes had the uh, 5.9 ERA, all right, and he had what's called WHIP, which is walks, hits, and innings pitched. So the W is the walks, the H is the hits, and the IP is innings pitched. That's called WHIP, all right? He was, in the last three seasons, including the last pass one, he was on the bottom third of pitches in the American League, in relief pitches in the American League, which is not something that we no. would like. And Brazier was fairly reliable, but he could either strike you out or <clears throat> he had very, very little control at times. So those were the only two pitches that they had that could look at anybody and say, okay, we might have a chance to win a game. And as if you watched any of these games, Barnes gave up a lot of runs in the eighth and ninth innings. That's when he came in, and there were many games that he didn't save because he gave up walks. Very wild. So a five-point ERA with a relief pitcher and a whip of over two is not good. Not bad. Not yeah. good. Uh, so I think that's where a little bit on the pitching uh, I want to go through the rest of this team uh, for a few minutes, Dick, and uh, I think we ought to talk about uh, the catching. All oh, right? yeah, sure. And I think Vasquez has uh, a pretty good, he's a, he's a decent defensive catcher. He's a decent catcher. Uh, he's got two more years on a contract at $13.25 million, which is pretty good when you look at money that these players are earning. And they had a, 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 a cast-off this year who he did okay, but he, went, he may not be around next year. Pa Pavlicki, and I think he was a decent fill-in, but I think the Red Sox need another backup catcher. They do. Now we can talk about the infielders. Mm. You want to talk about our infield on the left side, Dick, third and short? Third and short, uh, the, uh, what's, what's his name here? Uh, Rodriguez. Well, Rodriguez at that sh short. Bogarts? You're talking about Bogarts at shortstop. No, and Devers at third. Devers at third, yeah. Devers at third wasn't as good this year as he was last year. He's still got a lot of power. He's got a guy who's working very hard to become uh, another Wade Boggs if possible. And uh, he's a very strong uh, infielder, uh, although his, his errors uh, keep on creeping up every year. That's not good. So he still has more work to do on his fielding, uh, which is, hey, if he does it, then maybe he'll come back to be the guy we hope. The other guy, the shortstop, Bogarts, uh, I thought the Sox were going to trade him or, or release him this year. Uh, he is a good good player. He's a, got a power. Uh, but this year he was just mediocre. And, uh, now that, to me, is primarily due to the, uh, the way the season unfolded. You know, the, how can a guy get enthused about the club that's just mediocre? And uh, he just, he performed okay. He was a, he's still recognized as a good ball player in the league. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Sox let him go. Well, Dick, he's got a seven-year contract with the Red Sox. And last year was the first year of his new contract. They got him, they got him for $7 million for $120 million, which is, again, we laugh at this kind of money when we say it's reasonable. Uh, to the average American, which nothing is none, nothing in that sort is reasonable, but uh, I think they're going to. I think they, they had a chance to do something with him to get some pitching, but they did not do that. So I say he's going to stick around. Uh, by the way, Devers, as we mentioned, led the major leagues, and that means 
both American and National League in errors this year. Yeah. He made 14 errors this year in 60 games. He led the major leagues in errors for an infielder, which is pretty devastating. Uh, so he needs to really sharpen up his, no question his, about his defense. Uh, now, as far as the rest of the infield is concerned, we don't really have a second baseman. Uh, there was a couple of guys that they used at second base. One was Arroyo, who was a cast off and was released. Uh, he did okay at second base, but he's only a 240 hitter. Uh, so they, they really don't have a, a, a solid second baseman. Uh, at first base, uh, they had this guy that they brought up, and I think he did okay this year, but we know that after a year coming up and you hit the ball pretty well, name is Dahlbeck, D-A-L-B-E-C, uh, he hit about eight or nine home runs in a short period of time, but the pitching in Major League Baseball uh, basically is catching up to all these hitters, so you've got to be a step ahead. They have another guy named Chevis. Yep who did not do well this year, batted 220 and hit seven or eight home runs, but religiously he's up there swinging away at all the pitches that come at him. And so I don't think he's going to be a consistent 260, 280 hitter. I may be wrong, but that's what I see with him. So at first base and at second base, there's question marks there. I think the right, the other side of the infield, the short and third, I think would be okay with what we have. Um, now we go to the outfield. There was a major surprise this year in the outfield, a major surprise as a result of the Mookie Betts trade. Right. They got this kid named Verdugo, who played very well, was in the top 10 in most categories in the American League this year, and I think he's a hustling ball player, and uh, I need your opinion, Dick, on what you see in him. I like the guy. He, you know, of course, I miss Mookie Betts, but uh, this guy had a lot of enthusiasm when he was in the game, and uh, you know, he was going to take a lot of risks to do a good job, and he did. A, and he did a good job. He was a very good outfielder. He's a decent hitter. I, I think that uh, he's okay. I do too. I think he'll be a good, a good, steady ball player for them. Uh, I'll finish the outfield. Um, uh, our comments on the outfield after. Okay. We have another comment from another <laughs> Tom Stapleton. This is called Things That Won't Be Forgotten segment. <laughs> uh, I think we all, all will remember this one once I get through it, but Jose Consenco. Now, Consenco appeared to have the Indians designated hitter, Carlos Martinez, fly ball in his sights as he neared the right field wall. But the ball missed his glove careened off the head of Conseco's, and it bounced over his head into over the fence for a home run. A stunned Consento, Conseco, how do you say that? Conseco. Conseco. Couldn't help but crack a smile afterwards. And that's something that won't be forgotten. You're right, Tom. That is, that is, it bounced right off I the mean, top of his head. To this day, I, I mean, you see it. He didn't even know the ball was <laughs> where the ball was. That's right. He was in another world, most likely. He was in another world. You're right. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, a big disappointment this year was Ben Attendee, who came to the Red Sox with all kinds of accolades and did pretty well his first two years. He's been with the Red Sox four years. Uh, this is the end of his fourth year. Yeah. And uh, he did pretty well the first couple of years, but <clears throat> last year and this year, no show, no show. This year, he only played about seven games and he got hurt. And he had four hits and 39 at bats before he got hurt, Dick. And that was the end of him for this year. That was too bad. I think there's a possibility that there may be a trade for him or the Red Sox may still stick with him because Jackie Bradley is a free agent this year. Yeah, he is. And I am sure there are a number of people out there looking to grab Jackie Bradley. And Jackie is uh, looking for a big payday, and he's going to get it. If he doesn't get it from the Red Sox, he'll get it from some other club because he is one outstanding uh, outfielder. Defensively, he's, 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 uh, he's, he's a wonderful outfielder. Uh, now we look at the designated hitters, and J.D. Martinez had another – had a, not another – his first in a, in a Red Sox uniform, horrible year. He's got two years left on his contract with, for $38.7 million. 
So I don't think he's going to go anywhere because I don't think any team is going to pick up $38.7 million for him for the next two years. He has an option to opt out, he's but I don't think he will opt out. That's I my think he's elected not to opt out. Right. He said he had to talk to his agent, but yeah. yeah. There was no talk that he was going to opt out or none yeah. of the talk that would indicate that he might be thinking about being opti uh, opting well, out I think to go he sees elsewhere. the handwriting on the wall, right. as you mentioned. You must remember now that we have a couple of changes. There is a DH in the National League that's going to be permanent. Yep. They're going to be a DH in the National League. So he's got all teams out there, not just the American League, because as you well know, the American League was the only league that had a DH. And this year they had it in the National League, and it's going to be permanent in the National League. So that's where we're looking at right now. Um, the Red Sox brought up 30, uh, 23 new players this year in total. Most of them pitchers, as I said. Uh, we had 16 starters and almost 23, I mean almost 22 uh, pitchers. So they didn't bring up any many new players elsewhere that would play elsewhere in this t with this team. But 22 new players came up. Um, and 13 of them were on the 40-man roster. Now, the 40-man roster means that when baseball season starts, they have to have a roster of 40 players. And 13 of them on that roster were new players. And uh, so we don't know what's going to happen here with all of these new players. I don't see the Red Sox competing next year. And I think that you might want to comment a little bit about the managerial situation. Because Ron Renneke, who was the bench coach for Cora, became the manager this year. And I have to say, he didn't have much to work with. No, he didn't. And they, they didn't help him. They did not help him. You know, so here's uh, a guy who's a good, ex a well expe experienced um, baseball man, and uh, the Sox didn't support the guy. So, what are we going to do about a new manager this year, Dick? Well, there's he's, always. He's a, no longer going to be the manager. Ron yeah. Renneke will no longer be the manager. It seems like the Sox are leaning, bringing back Cora. You know, if they could, unless there's some uh, hidden gem out there, uh, but I think they're going to try to bring back Cora because he was a, he was very popular with the fan base. He was also very popular with the players, and uh, he's got that problem uh, based upon his time with Houston, and even with us, and so uh, you know, does he have a character issue? Is a question I have. You know, can, can he stay away from those kind of things? That, that's too bad because he's a very good baseball guy and he has to resort to those kind of tactics. That doesn't work well. Okay. But I think Cora is the guy they have in mind. I don't know who else they're going to bring up. There's no one that they've been rumored to have interest in, so you never know. The only thing I think here, Tom, is that this guy Bloom, who's now the general manager, with a, with, a, with a couple of assistants with him who came from Tampa Bay and who, at, while at Tampa Bay, um, brought in a lot of young players. He did. He did. And, and, and surprisingly, not only p p position players, but he also brought in uh, players that had some experience but were not top-notch players with other teams. And he brought in a lot of young pitchers. And I think that's what he tried to do this year, uh, as this was a lost season, was to bring up all of these pitchers this year because he has been successful with Tampa in bringing up young players and young pitchers. But as we just said, it appears that the Red Sox didn't find anybody among all of these 13, 14, 15 young pitchers that they brought up that show them any promise for next year at this point. Right. But I think that's what they're leaning towards. Uh, low low uh, salaries and a lot of young players. And if some of them come through, I think you're looking at a two, three, four year period if they develop before I, they become good I pitchers. I agree with you. Yeah, so ta he comes from Tampa, and that's why they brought him in here, because they did not want to spend big money on a lot of big free agents at the time. And so I think he's going to be looking at the pocketbook uh, in terms of what they want to spend. Now, the Red Sox are under the salary cap this year. They have $40 million under the salary cap. So they get $40 million to spend before they get into the salary cap. And the fact that they're out of the salary cap now means that they can 
now not have the 40% penalty paying the amount over the salary cap, which was $40 million. They had to pay the Major League Baseball 40%. They now start back at zero because when they go under, they start again. So if they go over next year, which is around $218 million, then they're going to be paying 10% on the $18 million. And next year after that, it goes to 20. Then it goes to 30. Then it goes to 40. So they start all over again with a with a a plus here of about forty million dollars. That's, yeah. that's that's pretty which good. Is, which is pretty good. Uh, a couple of a couple of dollar amounts before I do that. Uh, we have another segment of <laughs> things that won't be forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> that salary cap's amazing. Wow. Okay. Although Randy Johnson is a Hall of Famer with five Cy Young awards and a World Series championship on his resume. He's perhaps remembered for this incident as much as anything else. It was a shocking moment that defied gravity. As Johnson accidentally hit a bird with a pitch in a spring training game, facing the Giants' Calvin Murray, Johnson uncorked a fastball that would never reach its destination. As a dove flew between the mound and home plate and was struck, creating a burst of feathers, at the point of impact. Things that won't be forgotten. <laughs> Very good, Tom. Thank you. We got about three or four Thank minutes left. I just want to spend a couple of minutes on I what happened the crowd financially. Applauding. Pardon me, John? Where's the crowd? They're not applauding. They're not applauding. <laughs> I got to talk to that audio <laughs> engineer. You got to talk to that audio guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Red Sox lost uh, some about $100 million this year. They lost that? They lost $100 million in income. Oh. Uh, Forty percent of their income comes from tickets, concessions, and parking. Uh, and then they had none of that this year. Uh, they own Nesson, 80 percent of Nesson. The TV money came, was down 50 percent. The TV ratings were down 80 percent. So you see when the TV ratings are down, the advertisers don't want to advertise. So that's where that came from. All wow. of this money was lost by the Red Sox because of the uh, loss of tickets, concessions, and parking in their advertising revenue from TV. Major League Baseball, and this is hard to believe, Major League Baseball lost $3 billion this year. That's a B, $3 billion, which is a lot of money. And so the Red Sox need to now retool themselves based on, I think, what we've heard today, to get themselves back in contention in the next two to three years. I don't think you'll see it next year. I think you'll see a better team than you see this year. But they do have $40 million, and I think they need to go after some pitching time. Yeah, Dick. No question about it. Yeah, I think they need to go after some pitching. Uh, because they spent a lot of money on pitchers like, uh, players like Sandoval, Castillo, who played less than 10 games for the Red Sox, they signed him for $70 million for seven years. They had to pay him, all right? And they have draft picks now. They have the first time since 1967 they're going to have a draft pick in the, in the first round. They haven't had a first round draft pick since 1967. And that was their miracle year when they, when they went into the World Series that year against the Cardinals. So um, I think this is where we stand. Uh, we're happy to have you aboard, and I think the next time we see you all will be around spring training time. But as we know, we don't know where spring training will be. We don't know what the status of baseball will be. And uh, hopefully, they will be able to be fans in the stands next year and spilling some beer on you, Tom, <laughs> and screaming in your ear, uh, which was, you know, really what baseball is all about. Of Tom. course. It of is. course. So uh, th thank you for your little yeah. tidbits today. Well, they're, they're important, they're, you know. Pardon me? They're very important to they know have, this. They are very important. It's really That's is. right. So thank you all, and we'll talk to you next year. Bye now. Thank Bye. you, Frank.